opportunity given by JSS, the Honorable Principal Sir, HOD, and Ms. Dr. Suresh. And with this, I'll start uh, my session today. I uh, hope I am audible, sir. Can anyone confirm? Very well, audible. Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, as uh, Dr. Suresh told, I have a good number of experience in USFDA market product development and also what you call ROW, rest of the world, which covers almost other than Europe, US markets, where we develop cost effective products while circumventing the patent coverage. So today's topic, that is pharmaceutical drug product development, is a very important topic, all the more in this today's pandemic era, where US president is calling our prime minister and asking for a medicine. So it's really a great days to live in, in this golden era, where we are dictating the terms in terms of who we are supplying the pandemic medicine. Now, coming back to the drug product development. See, in any industry, the product quality is the only one which rules the roast. So the quality is what it speaks itself. You may have 1,000 medical representatives. You may have hundreds of advertisements. But if your quality fails, nothing can survive. So with that introduction of quality, what do you mean by quality in pharmaceutical product? Make it very simple. Being an academician, I can make it very, very simple that you deliver what is intended is quality. And don't do anything which is unwanted. So a medicine, especially orally given, is supposed to give a patient relief from his pain or treatment or a palliative efforts. At the same time, it should not produce any side effects due to toxicity or even any degrading elements from the medicine. So this is what is intended for a product as a quality. So with that, I will take you into the product development in pharmaceutical industry. What all the modern way of developing? See, I have been in almost more than 25 years in this industry where we randomly develop products those days where you just start somewhere and end somewhere and get something. But there is no clear uh, cut plan in the beginning and there is no clear idea what I want to do and clear cut idea what I got. But in the modern days, everything is controlled. You understand what needs to be done, how it should be done, and what you've got. So let us get into it. To design a quality product and its manufacturing process, to consistently deliver the intended performance. The word consistently is important. If there is one batch is good and next two batches are not good, you are not going to survive in the market. So you deliver consistently your performance, both in the product as well as in the process. Now, this picture, I don't have much pictures in this slide except one or two. So one of them is this. So this actually talks about quality risk management. So when I develop a product, as I said, the only thing I am bothered is quality. And how do you ensure your quality is not at risk? So I will ensure the following steps to ensure that quality happens every time in every batch of my product. So the first step is formulation development. <coughs> I'm sorry. So prior knowledge of the product is most important. A person who has a long experience in solid orals not even can claim he has ability to do a sterile product. Even with 25 years, people cannot jump from one field to another. That is a oral product experience into a sterile product. So you have to have prior knowledge on every product which you are intending to do. Second is how do you assess the risk in terms of the choice of excipients and the drug substance and the design space. So any formulation is made of two things. One is the excipient. Second is the drug substance, which is incorporated. Now, how you combine this both is nothing but the design space. Going to the process development. Many times, many people end up in 
quality issues because they have not understood the process properly when i say not understood the process one the very suitability of the process say aqueous granulation or non aqueous granulation is a direct compression or a wet granulation so it can be a choice of the right process is most important and this process also goes into the design space i will explain what is design space later then comes the process scale up see this is where many academicians or many institutions lack that they develop a small scale 1000 tablets or 100 tablets and then stop there because there is no way they can scale up to a 10x or 100x batch size if you manufacture 1000 tablets in your r&d you are at least supposed to make an 100x batch to ensure that it is scalable scalable means make into a bigger batch without any major change of profile from r&d then of course after the scale up you have to go for the commercial batch which may in 5 lakh or sometime you know 1 crore tablets per batch so that is nothing but tech transfer where you transfer the technology then of course you have to use risk management here to ensure product quality then comes manufacturing implementing implementation so here we have to maintain the process history and always improve the product or process so that you will always go in the upward journey of quality not that always go back and have some new problem or even an old problem next slide see pharmaceutical product development involves knowledge from the development studies and manufacturing this knowledge makes you a scientist this knowledge makes you a pharma professional who can guarantee the quality to the patients now what are the three important aspects of quality or ensuring quality the first one is design space Spec second is specifications third is manufacturing controls let's see one by one information from the development studies can be a basis for quality risk management i repeat quality risk management here the risk is for the quality of your product now the change of paradigm from what i was in 92 i started my career where you know we test the product at the end of the batch in the qc department and tell me whether the product passes or fails it's like a student i write my exam and then wait for the teacher to tell whether i pass or not but here it is your fate the student's fate is at stake but in industry the entire product quality is at stake if you fail in quality control so the failing is not an option now with the competition and the strict regulation by the government now how do you ensure that you don't fail forever always your product is of good quality that is you please build in the quality by designing the product so how do you build in only two things simple the formulation and the process these two has to be designed in such a way always we will have quality the third important thing in fact i will tell uh, the audience i am not sure where how many students and how many faculties are there the product improvisation is a huge area which keeps many scientists many formulation scientists in the job because when you see bmw cars way back some 30 years back or even Benz car, you will you will you will not even touch it today. That was so primitive in design. But when I see the BMW today, I don't I don't think we can afford it. That much excellent quality. Same thing applies in pharma product. You always improvise from one stage to next stage, so you journey towards excellence in quality. So now, how do you improve it? During the development stage and the life cycle management, there will be umpteen opportunity to improve the design space and also to improve the quality. And the most important thing, a very open-minded scientist, a very active uh, man who has a basic knowledge of how the principle of 
quality, how the principle of formulation science works, always look for unexpected results. Unexpected means I design my product in such a way, I did a process in such a way, but the result is totally different. So the real scientists always look why this has happened. So that gives you a lot of knowledge. It's a design space. What is design space? Design space is proposed by the applicant. Applicant means the company which is going for a regulatory approval. And he has to work within the space. It's, it's a, the very colloquial term space. That means it's like a playground. You have to play within that space. You should not go outside the boundary. Then if you go out, that means it is you are violating the approval. Once the product is approved, especially you cannot go out of the design space. Design space includes what excipients, how much excipients, what process, what process parameters, what is the range of the so-called parameters. For example, a, uh, a spray dryer or you know pan coating. What is the temperature range you can use? So you have to give while getting the approval from the regulatory authority. And in normal courses, you cannot go outside this temperature range. That's one example of uh, process parameter design space. It establishes this design space establishes the type of dosage form selected tablet or capsule or even a powder or a sachet, whatever, and the proposed formulation for the intended use. It also talks about or includes the drug substance. It can be aspirin or you know uh, uh, any new antiviral drug, excipients included, container closer systems, manufacturing processes that are critical to product quality. See, the word critical is very important. In product development and manufacturing, there will be so many steps involved, but a, a, a good scientist always knows what is critical step whether it is a formulation or it is about a process, he should know what is critical uh, to ensure quality. So the design space involves material attributes, nothing but excipients, choice of excipients, what type of excipients, and then how much percentage of excipients and the ratio, etc. processing options. Processing options means you can, as I said in the beginning, uh, yeah, yeah, granulation can be done in many ways. Wet granulation, again in wet granulation, aqueous or non-aqueous, or is it just pure or direct compression? So it depends on the type of product you go for. Then of course the parameters. The parameters means in a spray drying or in a uh, you know a pan coating, how much spray rate per minute matters? What is the droplet size matters? What is the inlet air temperature matters? So these are all process parameters critical for a good quality coating. So the design space provides a lot of opportunity to have more flexible regulatory approaches. See, in a product, you can always end up in changing some critical parameter while you change from one equipment to another. For example, you can use a Ganson coating to some other coating uh, pan. So there may be some changes in the parameters required for coating. So how do you ensure that you have a space, a design space to include that? That means while developing itself, you should have a clear knowledge of design space and make it flexible. Don't make it very rigid that you cannot change it tomorrow, your parameters, process parameters, or even the percentage of excipients. Any improvements within the design space is accepted. So this will avoid any post approval submissions. That means you get the approval, again you go back to US FDA and say, sir, I've changed this, please give approval. That is really suicidal. So you cannot plan for any such things unless otherwise it is really unavoidable. So you have to process your uh, uh, the, the, the development in such a way, you will not end up any issues with regulatory uh, reviews. Real time quality control, leading to reduction in end product release testing. So what is real time quality control? It is nothing but IPQC. So when the product is getting developed or when the product is getting scaled up or when the product is getting manufactured, you maintain the real time quality. That means while the manufacturing is going on so that we know if there is any problem or we know there is no issues going on. 
so that gives ample space for you to control the quality while manufacturing then comes the next one this design space helps in understanding by using the application such as pat that is process analytical technology and also any prior knowledge of similar products hello can i continue hello so the design space uh, and the design and conduct of development studies always look for consistent intended scientific purpose that means what i intend to deliver my product should be re uh, released for 12 hours in the git so that is a scientific purpose so that has to be achieved by your design space level of knowledge gained and not the volume of data see this line i always want to highlight us fda when you, they look for your submission they don't care about how many volumes of data you provided what they look for is whether the knowledge you gained in the product development in the process optimization and the final design space is really scientific so that is probably a difference between the developed world markets and the so called uh, you know uh, under developed world where the data is really analyzed in terms of knowledge and understanding of the design space see the first component in any product is drug substance so when i say drug substance is nothing but the drug itself so the physico chemical properties biological properties of the drug substance is very important and the third important thing is many thing in students may not know or in academics is manufacturability see this is the key word for anybody who is working for an industry the product is good you might have done some nanoparticles you might have done some 100 tablets or 1000 tablets in your lab but is it scalable is it manufacturable i think i have to define what is manufacturing manufacturing means you make it in a large scale of production of a product with a consistent quality so that manufacturability is critical especially you have to see in terms of physico chemical and biological properties of drug substances okay what is physico chemical properties it can be a simple solubility of the drug many times the product is developed right from the nature of drug if it is poorly soluble your choice of excipients differ if it is highly soluble your choice of excipient differ if it is a immediate release your choice of excipients will differ and of course water content this is a very major challenge in industry the water content or the humidity or what is the composition present in the raw material can drastically affect the quality and of course those who have been in years in particle size of raw materials or you know intermediate trees intermediate trees like the granule sizes or even the lubricants added the particle size plays a major role many times it makes or breaks the quality crystal properties again crystal properties can influence two major things one the very solubility to the stability of the drug so crystal properties are to be controlled in industry and of course last but not least the bioavailability and permeability do plays a major role for a drug substance drug substance these properties could be interrelated see the drug substance may have a particular characteristics so whether how it gets along with the excipients or any other combination drugs matters compatibility compatibility of drug substance with excipients listed listed means while submitting a dossier we always give a list of excipients when you submit your product composition so whether the drug is compatible this has to be established in the pre formulation itself and also in the final product if the product contains more than one drug you have to see the compatibility between these two drugs also 
I can tell many examples in industry. If the drug, two drugs are incompatible, we give a kit, KIT kit, where one product is given as a, one tablet, another may be given as a, a different tablet or a capsule, so that the patient has to take it together. But they are not manufactured together, so they are separate but supplied together as a kit. So you, this uh, incompatibility between the drugs is a major thing we have to keep in mind. Then of course excipients. I always say excipients is like a car. See, when you have to go to some place, your car takes you there and delivers. The same way, excipient plays the major role. In fact, the formulation scientist is paid only for choosing the right excipient, choosing the right amount of excipient, and uh, choosing the right process. These are the three things. So what excipient, how much of excipient, and how I manufacture it. These are the three things to be considered. So we have to take in consideration whether these excipients are compatible, whether these excipients will provide stability of the product, and of course, definitely the bioavailability and bioequivalence matters in terms of choice of excipient. So to repeat, a scientist selects the excipient based on the uh, bioequivalence or bioavailability he wants, based on the dissolution he wants, based on the disintegration he wants, based on the impurity profile he wants to get. So all these things will be controlled by the right choice of excipients and of course the process. Compatibility of excipients with other excipients. So this is where ICH guideline says you mix them in 1 is to 1 ratio or 1 is to 10 ratio and then keep it in the ICH guideline temperatures and see in the suitable containers how stable they are along with the drug and see whether there is any physical chemical changes. And also whether the excipients are doing what they are supposed to do. For example, antioxidants should reduce the degradation by oxidation. A good disintegrant should ensure the exact way of disintegration I want. A control release substance should reduce, release the drug for 18 hours or 9 hours about exactly a particular microgram per minute. That is the level of control we need in control release. And also it should have the right functionality and it should perform the intended shelf life. This is very important. I got the release profile, I got the stability, but will it sustain all through the expiry date, which is what matters for a regulatory authority. The information on excipient performance can be used to justify the choice and quality of excipients used. See, again, excipient is a huge world. See, a knowledge of various excipients. For example, starch itself is available in 100 different forms pre-gelatinized, gelatinized, granulated, you know, and micronized, spray dried. There are so many types of starches, but each starch grade has a different function. One starch can be a disintegrant, another starch can be a binder. Can you imagine that? So we have to be careful in the choice of uh, excipient and also its quality attributes. This will justify why this excipient is used in the drug product. Identification of those attributes that are critical to quality is the mantra. I use that word mantra, which is a Sanskrit word, but you need to identify what attributes are important for the quality so that your product will be always useful in terms of its usage, that is for particular disease and also root of administration. Information from the formal experimental designs. I'm using the word experimental designs for the first time. We will discuss later in detail. So how critical it is important to control the variables to ensure your quality product is there. The summary of your regulatory submission should highlight that evolution of the formulation design from initial concept to the final design. This is like a story writing. In movie, they say script writing, right? So right from the story to the final movie, you have to tell the FDA or any regulatory how you design the uh, initial plan or the uh, design space. And finally, how do you execute, execute the product in the final formulation? The choice of drug product components, just a minute. The choice of drug product components, one is drug excipients, sorry, drug substances, excipients, 
container closure systems and the process all four are critical <coughs> now i have explained the drug substances i have explained the importance of excipients now many uh, academic people or many even r and d scientists uh, are, are ignorant of the importance of right container closure systems when i say container closure there is nothing but packaging as i shared some time back when i visited uti a protein or amino acid product which was packed in a uh, 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 blister packing with very poor control of moisture in other words the moisture was passing inside and the product is getting degraded and the product is having a foul odor so the issue is they have not choose chosen the right moisture permeability while choosing the packing so as i said we have moved from the blister packing into uh, a strip packing strip packing is alu alu packing where the possibility of moisture permeation is zero so and of course the manufacturing process as i said aqueous granulation or non aqueous granulation do matters in terms of product quality so when i say aqueous granulation or non aqueous there are two important things when i move to non aqueous it is very easy product may be stable but you have to see the cost of non aqueous solvents you have to see the uh, impurity profiles which may develop when we use non aqueous process so you have to balance quality cost and of course any impurities etc the knowledge gained from the development of similar drug products so this is where the role of experienced scientists come the product development scientists so if you have already developed many odt orally disintegrating tablets you can very well explain the us fda why you straight away went to a particular process for example direct compression so as a experienced person i can tell the us fda direct compression is the most preferred thing for odt as it eliminates the use of moisture and also reduces the number of steps and while ensuring the quality of odt orally disintegrating tablet so what i'm saying knowledge gained in other similar products also will help in quality of products see when i say excipients say for example starch used as a binder so you have to establish what is the percentage normally they say 10% plus or minus 2% that means 8 to 12% is the starch used as a binder i am proposing in my submission for regulatory approval so that is nothing but an excipient range this is important with a justification why there is a need of 2% variation in the binder because the raw material may have different moisture levels or maybe there may be slight changes in the particle size of the drug material or crystalline forms or sometime even the moisture level in the blend the the tablet granule blend may differ so that may require a slight difference or increase or decrease of binding agent so that's why we give excipient ranges formulations used in clinical safety efficacy should be very important in especially when you go for the final product so what i try to say here is the product with the 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 the, the formula the design which is used for bioavailability or bioequivalency the same formula or the similar formula and the process should be used for commercial purposes you cannot deviate in the composition of the product or the process what you got successful bioavailability or bioequivalence and then later you cannot change it drastically when you go for commercial batches in other words the r and d level scale up level and of course the commercial level of uh, quality or the composition should be maintained how do you maintain through proper design of experiments and quality space or quality design any changes between the proposed commercial formulation and the clinical batches should be avoided and it should be minimal and if it is unavoidable it should be explained with a rational why this change is required generally no industry does it at this stage of any changes right from pivotal batches to stability batches to the commercial batches why because many times the regulator may get a doubt that we are changing many things at after approval unless if there is a minor change or if there is a valid scientific reason for changing but 
the it is up to the regulator to allow you whether that the such changes is acceptable in terms of quality so information from comparative in vitro studies and comparative in vivo studies like dissolution bioequivalence is very important especially this is something like your final year exam in b form or your project presentation so whatever you develop the product should provide the dissolution profile in the particular media in the particular fashion maybe the rate per minute or the you know the time period for which you are extending and also the in vivo studies where the typical auc cmax and uh, cmin is important so that you can match your product with the innovator so this comparative study data with the innovator product is very important the clinical formulations should be of the same as in the commercial formulation and should be summarized with a cross reference what does it mean by cross reference see i may use a particular batch for in vitro studies whereas i may use another batch for in vivo studies and then the commercial batch may come in later now when you compare this three you should generate a data where this cross reference between the in vitro batch in vivo batch commercial batch can be easily found out which one you are comparing to so that's why the cross reference is important so where you need to correlate between vitro and vivo relation the results these results will help you to understand the product a successful correlation between vivo and vitro will help you to select the right dissolution parameter or the acceptance criteria which is important for a product to deliver consistently when you go for commercial manufacturing we don't do bioequivalency bioequivalence every batch in the mar mar the marketed product right so we do only dissolution profile and the appropriate dissolution medias to ensure they are technically bioequivalent to innovator so potentially to reduce the bioequivalent changes or even anything the manufacturing process should be carefully controlled especially the score line you know the divider line in a tablet or anti counterfeiting measures like you know embossing anything should be done with the quality in mind and also the impact on in vitro or in vivo behavior of the product we cannot just like that change the score line or even over age or even any logo or embossing or even color printing you know a small change in the color of some color printing in the product may lead to impurities i have seen many such impurity issues while you print a color letter in the capsule you know capsule shell so it created a lot of havoc for us when we do the impurity so we have to be very careful when you use any uh, different score line or change in the tablet shape or take change in the tablet size thickness etc so we have to keep with that it may impact in vivo or in vitro performance overages see normally overages are not encouraged in pharmaceutical products unless otherwise it is vital for example there are products which may degrade 50% in the shelf life so 100% overage is not sometimes permitted for example you know multivitamin products where we add an intended and recorded overages for many multivitamins and also antibiotics again the, the 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 degradation while in the shelf life or the degradation in the git will be taken into consideration when you are adding a known amount of overage which should be captured in your batch manufacturing record physico chemical and biological properties for any scientist this is a bread and butter so when i control the crystalline property when i control the particle size when i control the moisture you can automatically control the dissolution with the right design of product many times many people think disintegration is nothing they say disintegration permitted is 10 minutes it should go so if my product is going at 9.5 minute people say well, it still passes but the innovator may disintegrate in half a minute so even matching dt is important when you do bioequivalence or even when you do you know matching dissolution products so you have to be careful which one is more critical whether dt or dissolution or both so also the drug release has to be controlled by choosing the right testing method and the development the critical formulation attributes together with manufacturing process ensures 
the right process and also it provides the appropriate components for your product. Of course, this is again a most neglected area, appropriateness of the equipment. See, the classic example I wish to share when there is a huge coating machines, you know, that, you know, automatic coating machines. So there will be so many types of coating fins. Have you heard of fins that will be there inside the coating pans? Each fin, each brand have a different fin. And these fins will create a different kind of product mixing. The, you know, the tablet which is getting coated will rotate in different way. So, for example, uh, pro, uh, the design by Ganson may totally differ from a Chinese model. So, you have to choose which coating pan is suitable for you. Again, when you go for a tableting machine, there are different type of tableting machines with advanced ones to primitive ones. A product something like, you know, magnesium hydroxide, aluminum hydroxide is a very hard tablet and it doesn't need a dissolution. You are anyway going to chew it in your mouth, antacid, right? So these tablets doesn't need very high control except the good hardness and of course, yeah, good, uh, uh, you know, very limited friability. They don't care about dissolution because anyway you are going to chew in your mouth. But the same thing when you go for a MUPS. Have you heard of MUPS? Multi-unit particulate system where a grand, where a pellet will be included in a tablet. So there, the, the, the compression force, the, 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 the speed, the RPM of the turret and the tablet diameter, the thickness of the tablet, hardness of the tablet, bind in a binder used, humidity there, everything matters there. So the choice of equipment is definitely important when you, when you want to control you know, the hardness, when you want to control, there is no intra-batch variations. So you have to have a very advanced control machine when your hardness may make, a, make or break because hardness will affect your uh, friability, the hardness will affect your DT, the hardness may affect your dissolution and hardness may also affect your stability. So you have to choose the right equipment which is sensitive enough to control the parameters of the product. Then, of course, the project, process development studies involve process improvement. See, no process straight away comes to you, boss, use this, uh, pro this process, everything optimized. No. When you file a regulatory approval, you already develop a particular process parameters within which your product will be developed. Validation. See, you develop a product, but I need to repeat the same product with <coughs> similar parameters or within the design space, you have to vary the parameters, for example, temperature or the spray rate or even the RPM of the coating pan. So still your product quality should be intact. So when you repeat the batches with either same process parameters or a range of process parameters within the design space, you can validate, yes, I get the same quality, even if there is a change in, slight change in the rotation of the pan, or if there is a slight change in the spray rate within the design space, it will not affect my product quality. So there are many controls and requirements, I'm sorry. So the knowledge gained is very important to justify. See, USFD always give your understanding of the quality. For example, the most important in tablet is granulation endpoint. When, how do you control granulation endpoint? There are many ways. Either you can check the moisture in the granule, you can check the, uh, the distribution of size of granules, and also you can check the conductivity of the granules in the tub itself, or you can also see the flow of granules while after drying. So the how do you control the endpoint for granulation is critical for one of the example for process control. The significant difference between manufacturing processes, if there is a difference, for example, your product developed at pivotal clinical trials and your final commercial batch are differing. Or if the stability batch, you, you might have studies three minimum stability batches in ICH guideline conditions, three batches. So if you use a particular process or uh, or uh, uh, composition and in the commercial process if you change significantly you have to explain and normally you have to get post approval uh, uh, changes you have to get from regulatory authorities 
the choice of and the rationale of selection of container and closer system is very important i explained you and the most important thing is whether it is suitable for the storage whether it is suitable for the transportation of the product for example if a tablet shakes and you know keep on you know gets uh, uh, fried or in the transport in a you know a container like a, uh, a htp bottle then the tablet may upgrade or lose its edges or sometimes it's even the hardness itself so you have to see whether the packaging is good enough for its storage in the normal conditions or it is transshipment where it may expose to different temperatures or even humidity the primary packing is most important where the the packing comes in contact with your product so that should be very very carefully controlled so that your product remains stable no impurities are generated and no migration of any composition into the packing material the container and closer system should be tested for its compatibility its ability to protect from moisture and light you have to check whether the moisture is permeating inside and if yes how much and also the cost is important and as these two words has to be remembered by any student the sorption into the container that means what the container may take from your product it may take a coating material it may pick up a color it may pick up a you know glycerin which is a plasticizer from the product coating into it and it may get Uh, affected the packing material may get affected primary container leaching leaching means something from the container moves into uh, uh, into the product so that means there should not be any movement of any uh, packaging material into the product itself so this is is important for safety of material constructions justification for secondary packing nowadays pack and trace has come nowadays secondary packaging also improves the stability by controlling the temperature or even the light passed through and also how good it is in terms of reproducibility and accuracy etc for example uh, 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 yeah, 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 odt is packed in a special way so that the patient can open the uh, take out the odt from the blister packing without breaking the tablet so this is a special design for odt even solid oral forms have special uh, you know packaging materials compatibility of a product drug product with reconstitution see if you use, if you see us fda uh, you know fasting condition or fed testing you know for bioequivalent studies they give a guideline for how to test the uh, bioequivalence or bioavailability so they have to use you take the product along with apple sauce they say or you dis disperse the tablet in one glass of water and drink it while effervescing so there may be many the, the recommendation for reconstitution so you have to ensure your product is stable even when you put the tablet in a glass of water still it is remaining uniform it remains palatable and it should be usable and acceptable to the patients especially in different concentrations see the ich guideline that is uh, q8 helps in the quality by design i am not going in detail of qbd which is a subject itself as a separate subject matter but it helps in q8 documentation where the product is designed in such a way that the quality is designed in the product itself quality risk management ich Q9 quality risk management includes enhanced scientific and risk based regulatory approaches this is again a paradigm change in the pharma industry those days we develop okay it it, it complies with dt it complies with dissolution it is stable it is not having any impurities okay the product goes to the market but nowadays you have to analyze what kind of risk is involved in this processes what kind of science assumptions or scientific facts are involved while developing the product the performance monitoring that is q10 is very important for the process and the product quality this is to demonstrate that you have control and identify potential areas of improvement so this is very very important that anything is an ongoing improvement means you have developed a product you got the approval you have commercialized 
that doesn't mean you relax for your life there is always scope for improvements there is always scope for avoiding any issues during the manufacture so continuous quality monitoring is important and of course this word you will hear in industry like anything corrective actions and preventive actions this is very important for monitoring of trends to identify root causes if there is some batches which always get a poor dt product may pass but the dt is not good or there are some products which may have increased impurity but still not fail so that means you have to analyze the trend in the product and say why some batches have higher level of impurities while some other don't have that much impurities there are some products where you know the yield the when reconciliation always the yield in some batches will be good and some batches you get a very poor yield means a lot of tablets might have spoiled so you have to do kappa to find why this happened and also to ensure you prevent such ha happening is very important for innovation establishment of quality by design is a very important thing so that the regulatory flexibility is available what is regulatory flexibility so when i my qbd is good that means i can very comfortably change the hardness within the permissible limits and still be sure my quality is good i can comfortably change the thickness within the limits and still be sure my final dissolution my final quality is not affected a management review of process performance and the product quality is very important see this is where the role of senior managers general managers vice presidents come so they have to continuously review the process as well as the product for its quality so monitoring and support monitoring is not finding faults monitoring is to find the possible faults and support to improve the processes and also to assess the adequacy of system and effectiveness see most of the time the system should take care of quality it's not every day some technician comes every day some manager comes you have to worry about the quality a system should be in place the quality should be inbuilt means if you buy bmw i'm sure the quality is there if you buy a glaxo product i'm sure the product quality is there same way any scientist should include that the quality of the system that is process or the composition will ensure that the quality is always there um then few terms which any scientist or budding pharmacist or a researcher should know qt pp quality target product profile so nothing but what is your target when i am planning my product i have to define what i want i told in the beginning when you develop a product you have to clearly say boss this is what i want what is the quality i need what is the safety i want and efficacy you may ask what is the big deal anyway every product should have quality every product should have a safety but you have to manage the cost factor because what Uh, us fda or us market pay you will not be paid by an african market i am saying do i have a uh, compromise in quality no but you have to manage the cost as well okay so that is one thing we have to remember then you have to also see what bioavailability should be maintained what kind of stability should be maintained this will all be part of quality target product profile then comes cqas critical quality attributes so what it means you have to know what are these critical attributes nothing but this product characteristics critical quality attributes is nothing but product characteristics which have impact on the product quality so it's like a human being what character you have will affect your quality same way your product characteristics will ultimately affect the product quality so you have to study them and control them this is nothing but c q a critical quality attributes so critical quality attributes uh, for the drug for the excipient matters so you have to choose the right type of excipient and you also the right amount of excipients and also the correct or appropriate process and also a control strategy see this word is new in this session so what is control strategy control strategy a planned set of controls as i said the system should be there in the factory a system should be there in the r and d a system should be there in the qc the planned set of controls which will be derived from the current product and process understanding 
as i said cqa is what is cqa what is critical for my product quality so you control your quality by choosing the right product and process understanding and ensure the performance of process and product quality happens so what is objective of the any product development you ensure the process that is nothing but coating process or compression process or packaging process performs as expected the product which is inside this packaging also of the right quality as designed so this is the final objective of control strategy so what is control strategy you have to use the cqa that is critical quality attributes so that you up, you, you ensure you are QTPP. So my final product should ensure that it has the correct viability, correct stability, and strength using critical quality attributes. While you ensure that control strategy is in place, control strategies may also attribute to the related to the drug substance and also drug product materials. It also includes components. facility this is very important i have not discussed so far see the rh the humidity relative humidity in a factory may affect the odt orally disintegrating tablet or even a granules packed in a bottle htp bottle so the rh will make or break the feasibility itself of such products i have discontinued some of the odt because the plant has no control or sufficient control on rh relative humidity equipment operating conditions there are some equipments which are advanced and create uh, can make control release products or even odt but there are primitive or early old and days equipments which may not have sufficient control of the product quality or tablet quality in process controls so this is nothing but a essential tool for quality so while the product is being manufactured in process will be controlled through make, controlling the disintegration you know weight variation friability and sometimes dissolution so when the batch is getting manufactured you can know whether everything is fine and if there is something wrong you can even stop the process and control the hardness or the thickness or friability so that you will not have a full batch manufactured and find it is failing in qc so that means correct yourself when you are young correct yourself when it is being manufactured so this is also coming under methods and frequency of monitoring and control in ich q10 i request all of you to go through that i will not go in detail finished product specification is very important so that the qc knows and the manufacturing person knows what he should comply for finished product cpp critical process parameters which parameters has to be controlled for quality or quality attribute this understanding is a smart way of doing your product so you don't have to worry about every parameter you should know if i control humidity the hardness may get controlled if i control the the compression force the hardness may be controlled if i control the granule strength or the you know the the way the granule distribution of the size of the granules you may control the hardness so what is critical for a process is very important and that is called as critical process parameter i can tell some few examples critical process parameter something like you know the 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 the, the distribution of particle size or granule size after granulation and drying matters amount of moisture left in the granule matters the speed of compression like you may say 1000 tablets per minute or 2000 tablets per minute or even 100 tablets per minute the revolution of no? the rpm of a tablet matters for process parameters in some products so, so you have to be aware of what is cpp proven acceptable range so this is a term where you fix the acceptable range of every parameter for example we continuously check the thickness of the tablet so you have to give thickness how much it can vary while the process is going on and also you can say hardness of the tablet when what is acceptable range you cannot say exact hardness will come in all the 100000 tablets so they vary in a range so you have to monitor them weight variation weight definitely will vary but what is the proven acceptable range has to be understood so that your quality will be ensured 
QBD, as I explained already, is a systematic approach of developing a product with predefined objectives. So you don't change the objective while you are doing the product development. Okay, so we have to ensure systematically we achieve our goals and also de design it in such a way that your product complies with the quality requirements. So it's very systematic. The other word in QBD is you cannot randomly do this way. Okay, I'll change the hardness from 10 to 20. I cannot do that. I cannot simply change the thickness from one A to B level or we cannot simply change the granule process drastically. So you have to design, you have to justify every composition of every component and also the process so that the quality will be with a sound science and a quality risk management. QBD reduces your risk and thus helps you to managing the quality. QTTP, I have already explained, quality target product profile is very important so that everyone understands. For example, when the product is developed, it is given by R&D, what is the quality target product profile. When the scale up is taken, the technology transfer fellow will know what is the QTTP. Then it is commercially manufactured, even the manufacturing chemist knows what is the quality target product profile. So that even this is supplied to the buyer also. Sometimes contract manufacturers buy in bulk. For example, 100,000 tablet goes in bulk container to Malaysia. He repack it there. So this QTPP will be provided even to the buyer so that all are in one plane. Yes, this is what is quality in this particular product so that the safety efficacy will be ensured and also the desired quality is there every batch. Real time release testing. This is again term which is very frequently used that it means it should be done in process as well as sometime in the final products. So we have to know that what is the quality when in the during the manufacturer or immediately after the manufacturer or while in the warehouse, etc. or sometime in the transit. Now, the idea generation is what mostly a product needs that, okay, boss, we'll do this, uh, uh, you know, uh, the, the delayed release tablet. Okay, we will go for a dispersible tablet. Okay, we will go for a controlled release. So that can be many ideas and there can be many improvisation, etc. Then any successful businessman should know what is the market potential. We cannot simply prepare and say, boss, I developed the product and you take it. It is what the market wants we have to give. And we have to ensure that demand is there throughout its life cycle. You cannot say 10 orders will come after that nobody wants my product. So we have to see the market potential if you want quality and you want to survive in the market. There are so many units in Pondicherry and in Bhatti where they don't have orders at all because they have not planned the market potential. Testing concepts and drug design is very important. Customer feedback, product improvement, continuous improvement is very important. Any products which are made available for trial and consumption should be continuously tested and then it should be launched. Best wishes for all of you. I hope I have been audible and clear in my presentation and any uh, questions or clarification 